of kings and gods, images of power and visual vocabulary. You may have noticed by now that there is a certain visual vocabulary for communicating the idea of power. Gods and kings tend to share that vocabulary, a great cycle of visual vocabulary, where the kings borrow from religious imagery to establish images of power, and religious imagery borrows from political imagery to communicate divine power. For example, remember the image of the stele of Hammurabi? Hammurabi is shown receiving his famous law code from Shamash, the sun deity. By being able to communicate directly with the gods, Hammurabi establishes his authority over the mortal world. Both figures are shown in kingly garb, with symbols of political authority. For example, Shamash sits upon a throne. In fact, he sits upon five thrones. The crossover of gods and kings was seen in the Greek and Roman worlds with images of both rulers and deities. The famous Zeus of Olympia, no longer extant, was seated with both legs pendant upon a great throne, holding an image of victory in his right hand and a scepter or rod in his left hand. This form of Zeus was often quoted by political leaders, even as late as the Lincoln Memorial, to create images of power for themselves. Constantine used this crossover of visual vocabulary to great advantage in images of his own power as emperor. In the famous colossal statue of Constantine from the Basilica of Maxentius and Constantine, Constantine used religious symbolism to great effect. The statue clearly quotes the famous Zeus, seated enthroned with the orb of the cosmos and pointing up so that his hand is raised, but instead of judgment, the hand indicates the heavens, the source of Constantine's power. This power portrait was furthered by Constantine's upward gaze, a reference to his newfound Christianity and deriving power from the spreading of popular religious sentiments. This crossover is also important when looking at religious imagery and its development over time. For example, let's consider the development of the image of Christ in art. An important early Christ image was that of the Good Shepherd, seen in the catacomb of Peter and Marcellinus. Christ is shown as a shepherd, in rough clothes, holding a shepherd's crook and surrounded by his sheep. The metaphor is taken from the New Testament, emphasizing Christ's role as protector and guide. And the actual source of the image is uh, devotional figures, such as the uh, Rombos figure from ancient Greece. Some hundred years later, the Good Shepherd can be seen in the mosaics at the tomb church of Gala Placidia. Subtle changes have occurred in the ideas of the Christ, which are reflected in the new images of the Good Shepherd. For example, note the clothes that the Christ is wearing. Instead of the plain shepherd's robes of earlier images, the Christ now wears purple and gold, colors reserved for imperial imagery. His new finery connects him with the images of imperial power, and thus emphasizes the Christ as a figure of power. This borrowing circles around to such images as the mosaic of Justinian in the church of San Vitale in Ravenna. Here we see the emperor Justinian bringing an offering to the apse of the church, the sacramental wine, and fulfilling his duties as chief priest. He shows himself as a divine figure in his imperial robes, processing to the altar with the chalice, an image of the Christ-like emperor. The halo is the key image connected to divinity, where light is used as a metaphor for the divine, and especially the sun, and the sun god such as Apollo. This motif becomes attached to pre-Christian emperors, and is then borrowed for Christ imagery, and is now borrowed back again for a political statement. This interpretation is furthered by the image of his wife Theodora in the facing mosaic, with the three kings of the nativity in her robe hem. She is likened to the Virgin Mary bringing the sacramental bread. Thus the images of divine and mundane power are intimately inter intertwined as both use visual vocabulary to express power.